everyone, Scott Luthold here with 4Expedition. Welcome back to another episode on our YouTube and Facebook channel. Today I'm coming to you from Seven Springs Road, which is a, uh, a stretch of road that leaves out of Phoenix um, from Carefree. And uh, it's about a 40 mile stretch of dirt road that eventually leads you up to Bloody Basin. And then uh, when you hit Bloody Basin Road, you hook a right and take that down to an area called Sheep's Bridge. And Sheep's Bridge is a really cool historic spot that's along the Verde River. There's actually a bridge, a suspension bridge that goes across the river that uh, has been used by, um, by sheep herders. And uh, there's some really nice spots to camp below the bridge, sort of natural beach area, which is kind of hard to find in Arizona. Usually along the creek sides, it's very rocky, but uh, in this area, there's some, some actual sandbars, and I like to camp in this area. There's also uh, a cool little hot spring pool that sits in the middle of a bamboo grove out here and I really enjoy sitting in there. A lot of times when I come up here I'll arrive around midnight on Friday night and then I'll set up my camp, I'll make some steaks on the open fire uh, and then around two o'clock in the morning I'll go sit in the hot spring and uh, chill in the hot spring for a couple of hours, have a few drinks and then um, go back to camp and sleep in till about noon on Saturday morning. And, that's probably what I'm gonna do tonight. It all depends on how many people are out here. It's, uh, it's a fairly desolate spot, so oftentimes there's not a lot of people camping at Sheep's Bridge, and it's ideal when uh, you can camp out here in the winter time. It's a little bit chilly, but a um, lot less people camp out in the area because uh, generally speaking, it'd be too chilly to, to swim in the water. So anyhow, it's uh, getting dark out. I've got probably another um, I'd say about 30, 30 miles to go on this dirt road. I'm um, all gassed up. Brian's a couple miles ahead of me, um, chatting back and forth on the radios. And uh, we're going to reconvene when we get to Bloody Basin Road. Anyhow, it's a little bit challenging to try to film while I'm driving on this road. So I'm going to take off for a minute and I'll get back with you in just a little while. You do have to be careful out here though, there's a lot of people that haul ass around the corners. I've seen a few of them. Ah, water across that road here. Not too bad though. Yeah, it just had a rainstorm out here, so I imagine that some of the washes will have a little bit of water in them. You know, you just gotta love these BFG all-terrains. You can just haul balls across this stuff. Cruising at about 25 or 30 miles an hour. Getting a little bit rough. I've had a lot of rain, so uh, a lot of the roads are washed out in uh, areas, we got some deep ruts.
you can fall right into my arms Cause I'm here to listen It's a beautiful morning out here It's been a couple weeks since I've done any kind of adventure It's been, uh, been a pretty busy couple weeks for me But this is a really nice spot to get out for the weekend, that's for sure Let me give you a little look at this over here So this is Sheep's Bridge a lot of history to Sheep's Bridge. There's the Verde River down there. The original Verde River Sheep Bridge is also known historically as Red Point Sheep Bridge. It was originally constructed in 1943 by Flagstaff Sheep Company, which have been grazing here in the Forest Service under a permit since about 1926. It says here for about 40 years the Verde River Sheep Bridge was the focal point of sheep ranching in Bloody Basin. The first flock of sheep crossed the bridge in fall of 1943, the last during the spring of 1979. In the intervening years, sheepmen used the bridge to move sheep from one pasture to another along the river. The ranch buildings included a three-room bunkhouse, a barn, caretaker's cabin, wood shed, chicken coop, and a shearing shed. So what a lot of people don't really know about is that uh, right down in here, all of this here, all along the shore here, this is a bamboo grove. And the reason bamboo is growing here in the desert is that down in this cove there's a hot spring. There's actually a man-made masonry tub down in there and you can sit down in that tub and soak yourself in the nice hot water. I've done it many, many times. It's a little muddy getting back in there, especially probably right now. I'm looking down here at the the Verde River and the water is very, very muddy. And that's mostly because we've been having a lot of rain in Northern Arizona and Flagstaff area, Cottonwood, Sedona. So this is all runoff from those storms. Over there on that side, it's my favorite place to camp. However, the reason I'm not camping over there is because I have the Subaru and the Subaru doesn't have enough clearance to get down to the water there. There's a lot of big boulders that are probably at least a foot tall, if not taller. I just didn't want to risk it late at night. Take some negotiating to get down in there and I just didn't really want to, didn't want to spend the time and take the risk and plus it's pretty muddy down there right now. So generally speaking, I've come down here with my Rubicon and had no problems getting down to the water over there. Down under these trees here is a really nice place to camp. On the other side of those trees there, there's a point where um, the river does a dog leg. Real nice spot to camp out there on the point as well. Nice rope swing hanging here from the cable. You know, one of the most amazing things about living in Arizona is the fact that it's a year-round adventure state. I spent the whole summer up in the mountains and the pine trees, pine forests of northern Arizona took you with me on a lot of those adventures and now that it's October uh, the temperatures up there in Flagstaff are starting to get pretty cold it's in uh, low 30s overnight probably be in the high 40s low 50s during the day and uh, it will progressively get colder until um, until the snow starts falling and Flagstaff has Mount Humphreys Peak which is over 13,000 feet and there's a ski resort up there called Snowbowl and for me, this time of the year is the perfect time to start doing a lot of camping in the desert. Overnight temperature last night was probably in the low 50s. During the day, it'll be in the 80s right now. Got a lot of beautiful destinations in the desert that I like to, uh, like to discover this time of the year, including places like this, Sheep's Bridge. And I'll be taking you with me on a lot of those little adventures. I've also got a couple of other bigger adventures planned for this time of the year. Um, and I'm really looking forward to taking on those as well. Swarrow cactus. Now, you gotta step over this dead saguaro. Look at this baby. That thing lived probably a couple hundred years. They say that it uh, doesn't produce its first arm until it's a hundred years old. Turkey vultures. 
Sure. Yeah. The noodles are looking for you. They are. Gotta get me some coffee. So the water's rushing pretty hard here. And the reason for that is because up in Sedona, Cottonwood, and Flagstaff, they've been getting a lot of rain. And the Verde River basically runs out of uh, the Mugion Rim area up by Cottonwood. Sedona and uh, a lot of the sediment rushes down here so that's why it's so dirty right now. It looks a lot like uh, the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon but uh, usually when this settles down and the storms subside you'll basically be able to see to the bottom. It's crystal clear, great swimming here. But right now it's, uh, it's not really all that attractive. It's moving around pretty fast so I've come out here many many times brought my son out here with a couple of his buddies and uh, did some camping out here with my Jeep and adventure trailer. I discovered this place probably back in about 2006. And one of the things I really like about it is the fact that it doesn't, um, it doesn't attract as many people because the roads getting out here are long and rough. So the people that do come out here are generally uh, Jeepers. You might get a, a Jeep club coming out on a Saturday. There's a lot of uh, GS motorcyclers or people with dirt bikes, things like that, but for the most part it stays pretty calm and quiet. I've had some really nice campfires right here on the shore, and uh, every year the, the terrain and the foliage change quite a bit, so uh, sometimes I've been here there have been some really nice sandy beaches, and other times, like right now, the shoreline's kind of muddy because we've had so much rain. But. Uh, the Verde River is considered a wild river and uh, you can put in up at Cottonwood with a canoe or kayak and paddle all the way down to Bartlett Lake uh, just outside of Scottsdale. And I think it's about a four or five day um, paddling adventure. There's a number of places where you have to take the boat out of the water and portage around some waterfalls and things like that, but it's, it's a very remote trip. Uh, it's something I've never done before. I'd like to do at some point with uh, with a group. Um, I probably wouldn't try this on my own. It is very remote out here, especially when you get um, in a boat and there's no access with uh, any Jeep trails or anything like that. So I'm going to attempt to show you the hot spring that's back here in the bamboo grove. Usually it's uh, pretty cleared away through here to get in on the trail. It's like Indiana Jones in here. Gonna be a little water. Nice little pool here. bamboo grove here it just kind of pops out right here out of the um, 
on the side of the mountain. So as I mentioned yesterday in the car, um, it's been quite a while since I've done a video and there's a good reason for that. You know, I've run an agency for about 16 years and uh, earlier this year I decided I no longer wanted to do design for hire. Had a really nice run with that for somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 25 years of my life. I ran an agency for the past several years. Before that I ran a, a boutique independent uh, design business and um, was real successful in that uh, in that line of work but I decided I no longer wanted to do that and one of the last projects I did with my agency was a project for a company called Search X and Search X was started by a guy named Robert Maynard. Robert Maynard's a good friend of mine. He um, He's the founder of LifeLock and Internet America both of which were companies he started in his in his bedroom and turned into billion dollar companies. <clears throat> well after I decided to no longer do my agency, I was really mostly planning on working on Four Expedition and another company that I'm a co-owner of called the American Financial Literacy Institute. And I was predominantly doing that and um, in the end of August, Robert approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in coming to work for his startup, SearchX. And um, I had to think about that for a week or two. and and uh, decided that it was a really good opportunity for me. It's only about 16 of us on the team, and um, I decided to take a position as Senior Vice President of Marketing for the company. And um, uh, we got a really strong team. Uh, amongst our team, we've got probably six or seven exits, uh, four IPOs. Uh, several of the companies that were started by some of the people on the team uh, cleared a billion dollars including LifeLock, Internet America, um, Market Watch, which is now CBS Market Watch. Uh, our CTO is a phenomenal individual who was on the team that developed the process that all of us go through on our banking app to take photographs of checks for deposit. And so he's a brilliant individual as well. And um, just everybody on the team is, is just really fantastic and um, I'm really proud to be a part of the team. I decided to take that position actually Mostly because, uh, as most of you already know, um, what my plans are, I've shared in some of my previous videos, most of you understand that my plans have to do with buying a piece of land and building a facility on that and having um, kind of a nature facility where I take people out into nature. I do proto uh, prototyping and product development and a variety of other things out there. And uh, in the meantime, I've also shared that I want to build a Sprinter 4x4 camper. And I decided to take this position not only because it was just such a fantastic opportunity to work with some amazing individuals, but I just decided that taking a position with SearchX was going to give me an opportunity to really advance my goals a lot quicker. Um, and I really feel like uh, this is just a really great opportunity for me, and I, and I just love working with Robert. I've always appreciated them, appreciated him as an individual, and, and look forward to uh, building a successful company with he and the rest of the team. So I'm gonna do that for the next couple of years. Don't worry, I'll still be doing a lot of adventures. I'm an adventurer at heart. In fact, I've got a couple of adventures coming up here soon. Please uh, sit down. Uh, tonight we'll have a campfire. That would've last all the 10 minutes. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. thing right now. I see, look at that.
Well, it doesn't look like we're going to get the sun because uh, there's a huge swath of clouds coming in. Yeah, dude. I know, I'm bad. Swearing like a sailor. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty uh, gnarly last night, wasn't it? All right, dude. And that's a wrap. How it goes. <laughs> Well, as you just saw, it rained like a mother last night. Lightning and thunder. I actually spent a little bit of my time inside the car because it was lightning so close to the car. So we decided to head out early because we've got about 40 miles and a good portion of that is a real muddy road. So we wanted to do two things. One, we wanted to get ahead of other people that might be leaving this morning because once they drive through that mud, it's gonna be even worse. And uh, number two, um, there's a good possibility we could get stuck in the mud. We do have max tracks and toe straps, but it uh, should be a lot of fun. So how long have we been going? About a minute? Maybe two minutes? It's bad. And I don't even have four-wheel drive right now. Yeah, your four-wheel drive's out. We're getting a little bit gnarly here. This is going to be a bit of a long, this is going to be a long day. Yeah, I would um, be super careful not to slide too far close to the edge. Look how, uh, look how it's all caked up. Yeah, but how? That's like. Oh, that's. That's not too deep, at least. But, it's all uh, over the hood, though. <laughs> this is only two minutes into the drive of 40 miles. Well, we'll take a. Take a quick peek at it before we cross. Doesn't look too bad. When you're off uh, doing off-roading and it's really muddy or it's really rocky and um, you know you, you start to develop a little bit of anxiety and uh, stress around staying focused on making sure that you don't get stuck or uh, avoiding big boulders I mean you do that for a couple of hours straight you probably don't even notice it but by the time you get to your destination your your shoulders and your neck are probably burning because you've been holding on to uh, the, the steering wheel pretty tight and and uh, staying really focused. Well, I use this product while I'm off-roading. Uh, they're called touch points. And uh, basically, they alleviate stress in 30 seconds or less. And they come with wristbands. You can wear them on both your wrists. There's two of them. And I'll show them to you here. So they're just little fob devices that um, on the top edge and bottom edge, there's a place to attach wristbands. You can put them in your wrist, on your wrists or you can put them in your pockets. But what they do is they, um, they're a tactile device. They vibrate back and forth. And they're said to alleviate stress within 30 seconds by influencing your brain activity, influencing your fight or flight response in your brain, which, um, which causes most of the stress that we all have. So uh, when I'm intently driving off-road and uh, 
you know, maybe there's a little bit of danger involved where you could be, it's really slippery and muddy and you could slip off a thousand foot ledge. Uh, you start to develop some anxiety about it. And if you wear these and you put them in your pockets, they vibrate back and forth and believe it or not, they really work. Um, yesterday I used them on the way in and uh, Brian, uh, once we got to our destination at Sheep's Bridge, he was pretty stressed out and I gave them to him and they, uh, they alleviated his stress pretty quickly. So if, you, um, if you're interested in these, uh, just be sure to click the link in the bottom of this video. I've got, uh, I've got a link to the product in there and uh, I know the owner of the company and she's an expert in, in, in stress and relieving stress. So. Yeah, you gotta line it up though too. Did you get rid of it? Pretty much, yep. Is it a little left? Tiny bit. There we go. 